Hello everyone, this is Joe here from Omnipoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. Today we're looking at Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team GX. It's the archetype that pre on Broken Bonds was pretty much the undisputed best deck. Uh, but now, there's Reshizard to contend with, but he still remains a top tier contender by the looks of things. At Madison, it achieved a top 4 placement, as well as a top 16, and two top 32s, all with the same 60 card list that you're looking at today. Usually, I like to make some personal preference changes to decks while I profile them, simplify them down, and make them uh, you know, as consistent as can be. But honestly, I think uh, this list is, list is very consistent, and uh, its tech spaces are in the right places in my mind right now. I think they've done a really good job with the 60, and it's the one that I'm just going to net deck for today. I actually ended up testing this on stream yesterday. You can see in the bottom left corner of the screen a quick little win-loss. Uh, I wanted to put this in just because it's some free information for you guys when I've been testing this deck. But at the same time, it's a nice reminder that I am streaming on Twitch over at twitch.tv slash Team Omnipoke. You can find me. I'm trying to stream daily in the week now as well, so try and uh, check that out if you can. So let's look into the cards and all the decisions within it, and then we'll get some games. So kicking off with the main attacker, Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team, 240 hit point lightning type. Weakness to fighting is still awkward. Uh, Sledgehammer still around. Uh, as well as Larvitar being in Weezing. So those are the two main things that are playing fighting right now. Maybe some Zoroarks with Sylvalai out there, but the main Zoro variant has now pretty much established itself as Persian Slowking. So that's good news for Picarom. Previously, I had to be worried about uh, Lycanroc. Not so much the case anymore. So that fighting typing, although still is awkward in a couple situations, it isn't all that bad. And he still has these two phenomenal attacks, which is the main selling point of the deck. The reason why we put this three prize Pokemon into play is so that we can full blitz from the off. Uh, for three lightning, you do 150 and attach three more lightning uh, from the deck to one of your Pokemon. Now, if you feel like the Pikachu and Zekrom is going to go unchallenged, you can slap it all onto the active for big tag bolts. But at the same time, it can set up other Picaroms as well as Zera Aura as a nice backup attacking option in the deck as well. So this full blitz is pretty much the main goal for this deck, trying to get it as early as possible. So then we can be threat uh, threatening multiple other attackers or just getting that Tag Bolt ready to rumble, which is awesome. So this Tag Bolt Jets attack is still a big selling point of Picarom. For that three lightning, we do a baseline of 200. That's already quite good. And in a world when you're up against other Picaroms as well as Reshizard, that 200 base output is really important. Uh, we are two modifiers away, a combination of Electro Powers or Choice Band to knock out a Picarom itself. Or we can have three modifiers to knock out a Reshizard. So it is a bit of a challenge at times, but we can make it. And uh, if we do have that extra three lightning attached, we can also do 170 damage to one of our opponent's bench Pokemon. Easily knocking out Lele's, Dedenne's, and sometimes even just one prize Pokemon if need be as well. So we can get some huge prize swing turns with this Tag Bolt GX attack. Bear in mind Mew is in the format now thanks to Unbroken Bonds. So people can answer this big Tag Bolt if they want to but it's the number of people that are actually taking for it in the first place. And at the same time, we can maybe try and knock out this Mew quite easily with like a Zapdos, and then the board can sometimes be free or open to Tag Bolt down the line as well. So always an option to bear in mind that Vanilla 200 is already very good against tag team matchups, but when you do get that six energy on board, it's also phenomenal. Up next, we have the Zera Aura that I just mentioned as a backup attacker. Plasma Fists for two Lightning and a Colorless 160. Already enough to knock out the Dene's, which is becoming pretty popular, to be honest, in both this and uh, Reshizard decks, as well as even sometimes Zoroark is adding it in. Uh, so that vanilla baseline is very good. Again, it gets modified by E-Powers and Choice Man when need be. But that's not all for Zero Aura. It's Thunderclap Zone is the main reason why he's actually in the deck. Providing free retreat for our Pokemon with energy attached, the Lightnings, uh, is amazing for us. Uh, it means that we can... Uh, make our combo towards this full blitz a lot easier. It means that we can attach to the active and retreat into a Picaron much easier and then just energy switch onto them, which is a great deal for us, um, whilst also uh, offering freedom of movement out of our Pikachu and Zekrom if we want to, out of the Zero Aura to get around its own Plasma Fist's text where it can't chain attacks. You can just retreat out of there for free if it does tank a hit, even helping out with our Zapdos, which otherwise would have a two retreat cost. So this ability is obviously phenomenal. Quick word on the full voltage GX attack as well. That's also an option. Mainly really if you're up against stall matchups uh, to reload energy cards. Oftentimes it's not mandatory, but it's something if you do need that big reload in a pinch. From there, a couple of Zapdos. It's a nice non-GX one energy uh, Pokemon. So not a huge amount of commitment, but sometimes you can just take an easy prize. Knocking out Jirachis and Marshallos for fun. Uh, evolving basics as well, especially things like Grimers and Dittos. You don't really want to see a Muck against this deck because... 
our deck is full of basic ability cards, part of our draw engine, as well as that Zero Aura being huge. So trying to target those down early is obviously a big deal. Um, and once again, it has damage modifiers to push Thunderous Assault even further if need be. We then have the Tapu Coco GX and the Coco Prism Star. Pretty much the most important card in the deck is this Coco Prism Star. Dance of the Ancients is something we will use literally every game. Um, you will bench this and then shove it into the Lost Zone to go ahead and grab two Lightnings from our discard pile onto two of our different bench Pokemon. So this is a great deal. We have a lot of discarding synergy with our four Ultra Ball, our two Electromagnetic Radars, and our two Dedenes now into the deck. So lots of ways to discard Lightnings early and then get Dancing to start powering up Pikachu and Zekrom most of the time as quickly as possible. Uh, also powering up like a backup Zero Aura or giving us options for energy switch as well. So these two energies can oftentimes find both of their ways onto Picarom and then just a manual attachment and straight away we're full blitzing, which, which is a really big deal for us. So this Coco is integral. The Coco GX is still in the deck. Aero Trailing can steal energies for himself uh, and jump into the active. Sky High Claws enough to knock out non-GXs pretty easily and again scales with all these powers and whatnot. But the Tapu Thunder GX attack option is still a really big one. It can knock out Reshizards, especially if they have to go for 6 energy um, to do a Double Blaze for 300 damage on our Picarom. We can get a nice response with Tapu Thunder GX. And once again, in mirror matches, it can be a big deal. So for the two big tag team matches, Tapu Thunder is still a phenomenal option for us, which is a great deal. From there, uh, we have one copy of Absol. Dark Ambition is trying to slow down other people trying to use Jirachi. So that's Zapdos, that's some Picaroms, that's some Reshizards. And a handful of other decks trying to stellar wish. Even things like Malamark can be annoying for. So the Absol is a great one-off tech card right now. We also have one resetting hole Marshado. Again from Unbroken Bonds. Uh, it offers the Red Knuckles attack. Which is actually pretty good against a big threat. Which is uh, Buzzwalls. Uh, with a choice band you can knock out a Buzzwall GX. On its own it knocks out a Baby Buzz. It can already knock out um, things like Naganadel as well. Which is actually relevant now that the Cephalon's kind of creeping back into the format. And Quagnag to an extent. So... One energy to knock those things out is actually a pretty good deal. Uh, but at the same time, resetting Hole is his main purpose. Um, you can bench him and discard a stadium. This gets around the Prism Star rule as well. So you're contesting uh, Heat Factories and opposing Thunder Mountains and stuff pretty nicely there. Uh, whilst at the same time being a recyclable option of stadium removal. Because we do play Rescue Stretcher as well. So when you're up against the likes of Weezing, uh, you can recycle this guy to remove more Shrines. Same for Zapdos. If there's a stadium that's bugging you, you can have this and maybe a reload of it with Stretcher as well. And at the same time, it's more searchable than just trying to dig towards field blowers and stuff. So he's a searchable stadium bounce, which is very good. And then the Red Knuckles is cream on top, really, to help out against some of those pesky fighting type Pokemon. And then we have five Pokemon slots dedicated to basically trying to draw us cards. The Lele in here, Wonder Tagging to try and find big Lilies early on in the game as well as, you know, Guzman's late game to close, or even Volkner. Volkner gets a lot stronger um, now that we have Electromagnetic Radar. It's like a really clutch supporter that we have, so even Wonder Tagging for that isn't that uncommon. The 2 to Dene is, again, a huge change for this deck. Dene changes a phenomenal ability, allowing us to discard a hand and draw six cards. So you can only use this once per turn. Um, so you can go big supporter, hopefully like a Lily for a large amount of cards, and then Dene change afterwards, or vice versa giving us a real big dig into our deck, looking for these Prism Star cards. The Thunder Mountain and the Coco can really help us get to full Blitz as quickly as possible, as well as trying to dig towards energy switches and our other and our other combo pieces. This is phenomenal, especially because you can essentially search it out for free with Radar. Think about Radar just being an Ultra Ball. You're able to get yourself a Dedene for free, whilst also getting like a Zero Aura or a Pika Rom. So it's amazing. Really nice search ability in this deck in particular. And gives us a huge hand reload as well when we need to dig deep into our deck. Which is usually on those opening turns to get full blitz in quickly. Quick note on Tingly Return GX. Uh, it's actually an option that I've used like once or twice in games. It can paralyze. And if you're doing this in combination with like a Let Loose or whatever. You can force your opponent to have a Guzma to get around things if you're in panic stations. But it is very rare that you'll use this. But it's a little bit of an option. Whilst at the same time it picks itself back up. So like if you don't even have a way to close the game, you can tingly return and hope that like your next dead a change can draw you into game, stuff like that. So if you just want to buy a turn, that's a GX attack option as well in the deck. Uh, so lots of GX attack options to bear in mind. Most of the time we will tag bolt, but we have, you know, three others that we could be considering here as well. So uh, then we have the double copies of Let Loose. Uh, Marshadows, still a big card. Um, trying to make people answer a big tag team, sometimes with six energies attached to it. Uh, when they only have a five card hand starting off their turn is not very easy so making 
combos difficult for the opponent is a big deal. We're all about that high pressure, and it can also reset our own hand size as well. So that's always a nice option. It can help us dig a little bit deeper if we're trying to hit combo, whilst at the same time, sometimes disrupting our opponent's hand. Onto the items. The one escape rope is a nice switching option available. It's like the only switch we have outside of Guzma. We do have Volkner searchability for it as well. So although the one count seems like a little random, uh, I think because we have Volkner searchability, I have found use out of it. Most of the time we're Zero Aura based, but this one additional rope can help out and it's extra gusting as well to force the opponent out of the way. One copy of Rescue Stretcher. I've mentioned how it can be nice for resetting a Marshado if we are worried about any stadium in particular, mainly Shrine. Uh, but also, we only play two counts of like Pika Rom, Zero Aura, and Zapdos. So, recycling any of these can be important. The Zapdos can be recycled if you're up against a mainly non GX matchup. Uh, the Pika Rom, if like we've prized one or whatever, even things like the Absol, if it's going to be pesky for the opponent and they want to knock it out, we can reset it quite nicely with that one copy of Stretcher. So, it's pulled its weight in the deck so far. Couple copies of Field Blower, pretty nice tech card right now. Batons for like Blounds and Quagnag. Um, it can be. Uh, skateboards for opposing Jirachis and all sorts of decks, especially alongside Absol. It's really annoying when you get rid of them off the opponent. And at the same time, it's going to help, help out against uh, Spell Tags from Weezing, Shedinja Control. Uh, all these things are covered thanks to this Field Blower. So it's a pretty nice option for us there. Uh, we have four copies of E-Power. It's a main selling point of the Lightning decks. They have four ways to modify damage. This is essentially 120 damage all in items. Uh, that we can spring on the opponent at one time or another to reach one shots or even set up two shots and stuff So that's a pretty big deal for e switch is again like an all-star in the deck It helps us move around our Pokemon with Thunderclap zone as well as trying to get this full bits rolling as quickly as possible Especially because the Coco hits two different targets instead of like two energy onto one target So if you put two on each then you like e switch one back off and just say get onto the Pika arm and get him full bits in quickly That's the main purpose of these energy switches and then we flood the deck with as much ball search as possible. Double nest balls, really nice deal. Uh, the Coco Prism Star is definitely one you want to pick out. Sometimes Marshadow as well. Uh, we have great searchability for our GXs with the four Ultra Ball as well as these two radars, which can only grab Lightning GXs or EXs. Uh, but that's fantastic. That's our key pieces: the Zero Aura, the Pika Rom, the Dedenne, even Coco on a crucial turn. So it's a really phenomenal new addition from Unbroken Bonds that we can take advantage of here. The one off Thunder Mountain I think is fine. No other stadiums. Potentially things like Viridian, but as mentioned, the Marshadow is essentially like two energy, sorry, two stadium removals because we have the stretcher in one space. So if you just have like one Viridian, it's only one, you know. So at the moment, I think the one Thunder Mountain is fine uh, as well as like the field blowers and whatnot. Uh, two, Volkner, as mentioned earlier, thanks to this radar, it gets so much stronger because the Volkner can end up getting you like energy that you can then just discard straight away with a Dede change and get yourself a fresh hand at the same time. So the Volkner gets way, way stronger in this deck. It's a nice two of count. Three Guzmas for trying to pick off opposing like GXs and just closing the game at times. Really easy to close out on like Lele's and Dedene's with this deck. And four Lilies to get those big opening hand sizes because that's the most crucial term for this deck. We are combo orientated, trying to do as much as we can on the opening turn is what Lily's all about. From there, double choice ban to help us push numbers. You know, it is a lot of modifiers to knock out opposing tag teams, especially uh, Reshizard. You need three, you need double E power and choice band or three E powers all at once. Now that is a big task, but um, we need to have these choice bands to help us have outs uh, one-shotting them. Also, obviously, uh, Tapu Thunder is a big way that we can knock out Reshizard at the same time. One uh, Stealthy Hood in here, it can help out so that we can actually attack through a Vile Plume, which is Kind of the main reason why it's in here, but it's also slightly helpful against Weezing to stop Detention Gas on one of our Pokemon, so also something to bear in mind. Finally, 12 Lightnings round out the deck. It's plenty. Once again, we have extra discard from the two Radars that join the deck, as well as the double the Dene, so lots of outs to those cards, which is always great. So, for other additions in the deck, there really aren't many that I would like consider too important. I think Mew's one that uh, is potentially going to be more and more relevant if there are going to be more Mirror Matches now, seeing as though we're you know, getting good results from Picarom over the last few weeks. Mew to stop opposing tag bolts can be an option. Um, at the same time, you can just try and go for, you know, a lot of the time it's answered by you just responding there, Picarom, with one of yours. It's very rare that either player will get off a big tag bolt, and if ever they do, the game's already, like, over, like, the turn before because you weren't able to answer them. So the Mew's not, like, mandatory, but it can be an option for you. Honestly, the only other card that I've been like kind of considering in the deck is just a Cynthia, to be honest. Uh, there are some moments where you're holding on to combo pieces that you don't really want to discard from a Dedene, 
And if you're like holding onto Ultra Ball and you're like, man, there's only a couple things I want to discard here. Why do I have to Dedene this? It's not really strong enough to Lily or whatever. You could just uh, Wonder Tag for Cynthia instead for some Shuffle Draw. There are moments where you've drawn into too many E powers or too many E switches early that you don't want to like commit them uh, before Dede changing. Um, so there are pieces in this deck, as you are a combo-based build, that you find things at the wrong times at times. And um, maybe a Cynthia could bail you out there, but even then it would just be one copy. Even to an extent you may just prefer an extra Volkner in here or something instead. Uh, but overall I think they did a really good job on the list, and I think it'll be a baseline that will stick for a long time. I think throughout this format, their, you know, like 50 card shell will stay, and then the counts of like the Absol, the uh, field blowers and stuff, those will change as the meta develops, but overall I think the guys did a really good job with the list. So I'm gonna quickly hide this now. You should have had a good chance to see what those matchups were. You can go ahead and check back the clip as well if you want to watch more gameplay of Picarom. But for now, we'll jump into the ladder and get some extra games in with this deck. I've always been a fan of Picarom as soon as the Dedene came out. Uh, previously, I thought it was a bit YOLO based, but now we have so much digging potential. Trying to make these combos feels a lot more safe and secure. Looking for these full blitzes on one, although still sometimes rare. I mean, it's so much, so much more likely than previously, so that's phenomenal. We start off with a Zapdos, which isn't actually a bad thing for us. We have three energy in our opening hand, one of them being a Radar, like one other card being Radar. So as long as we haven't prized double the Dene, this hand is amazing. This is really good. Looks like we're up against a uh, Reshizard as well. A Reshizard that's playing Surge, Kiawe, Maxpot, and Kukui. They're playing a lot of things. So they are teched for Picarom. Um, and... They also play Max Pot, so that's something to bear in mind for sure, but uh, we're going second here. We'll see what our opponent's opening hand looks like. They're playing Poker Gears, which probably tells me that they are going to be um, greens based rather than um, Jirachi based with like Dedenes and Leles. Oh wow, they whiff off their Poker Gears and they just pass. So let's get radaring. We do have Dedene, we have Picarom, we have prized our Coco Prism, that's real bad news. Nothing, uh, that's one of our key pieces here. One of the best ways that we can try and tempo out on our opponent is via early full blitzing. But that option has been taken away from us now, which is a bit of a shame. So we're just going to have to dead a change here. So as great as the radar was, we're not going to be taking full advantage of it early. We're able to find Zero Aura. You can also Volkner at this point. I think I just want to definitely grab... Like, the energy is actually, like, the most important thing that we can grab here. And I think I just want an Ultra Ball for next turn. Do I want it to be a radar? I probably do have to dead a next turn. How many Guzmas are in here? Only one more Guzma. Really don't want to let loose when our opponent's passing into us. So I guess it would be the radar. So let's go ahead and grab that. And end the turn. So imagine the scene if we were able to get Coco Prism here. Like, off this Volkner, if we could get Coco Prism, we could Prism two energies into play. And, obviously, if the Coco Prism was in deck, we would have attached to the Zapdos, and then we could have, like, double E-switched, retreated, and got a turn one full blitz, but... Because the Coco has been prized, we don't have that luxury. Our opponent's going to Welder, so they drew into a Welder for turn, and they're just going to Outrage for 30 here. We draw into Absol, which isn't all that helpful. Now then, we just got to go Picarom again. Not ideal that our stretch has already been played. I th think I don't want to... Yeah, I don't have space for these cards. Uh, we will just the Dene again. I'm going to get another Picarom down. It's pretty important in this matchup to full bits onto another Picarom, because we'll have to tag bolt through a Reshizard. It's too many modifiers otherwise. Um, so, we've got to do this. 
we do get into Thunder Mountain. We'll probably be playing that next turn. I can Lily for one, but I think next turn we have a number of Insta playables, so I think we'll just pass and Lily next turn for more value. Opponent actually spending a Kukui to draw cards here, which is good news for us. They really have bricked so far. Retizard number two does come down. Remember, if we do hit into this Retizard, they are holding on to Acerola, but if they're using Acerola, they're not using a Welder. These are the facts. So we can finally retreat much slower than we would have liked. We can do this. I still have the option to draw more cards off this Lily. Do I want the option to field blower? Yes. Do I want the option to zap those? We already have that option. We've already got through one let loose. So I think I will just draw two cards. And we can full blitz. So we are not safe from Flare Strike plus Choice Band. So we'll have to commit to the bench here. As mentioned, they're holding Ace, but they would just be acing into another Reshizard and like attached passing, which doesn't feel great. So their slow start is definitely being felt so far. See what they're going to do. There's potential that they could use maybe like double custom catcher and knock out a Dedene with Outrage or something like that and start like attaching to another Reshizard. It's pretty good tempo. Other than that though, they don't have many strong plays. If they could ace into a non GX, that could be powerful. Looks like they are playing greens here though. Possibly to try and accumulate some of those custom catcher plays. So they actually start developing prizes. We see Flint plus Choice Band. So it looks like they're setting up for next turn. We're going to get rid of two Stealthy Hoods with their Fiery Flint. Get four Fires into their hand. have a manual attachment that's probably going to go to the back. So if they manual this turn, it means they can weld the next turn and manual attach. And then choice band flare strike would take a knockout. They may be debating whether or not it's worth just healing this guy, but no, they are going to outrage for 180. We pick up choice band. That means we're one modifier away from knocking out with Zapdos, which would be the absolute dream. Because we don't want to put our tag teams in that much danger. I think I will be discarding these. I think I want to grab this as an option. Obviously, we still want to... Like, the dream is that we find an Electro Power, but just having this backup for our opponent as and when sounds pretty good. I don't want to commit the Choice Band either, really, because it only makes sense if I can actually take the knockout here. So, three draws. We do find E-Power. That's enough to take a knockout with a non-GX in the active, which is great news for us. So, we're not threatening our big boy. So we can just go for a Thunderous Assault. Seems that they have already outraged us. Um, they can take a knockout with that just 30 base damage outrage next turn. But they're a bit of an uphill battle at this point. We have a lot of energies in play. As annoying it was to prize this, our opponent still had a pretty slow start here. We're going to try and take advantage of that. The thing is, Reshizard is still so threatening, even when they have slow starts. They are still very scary. 
They can outrage for the one prize knockout here. So we'll go into Zara Aura. We can start thinning some cards. Do I want even more energies in play? I can go for the full value tank bot if I want to. We're going to dance. We still have uh, energy switches available. Still have all of, uh, still have one of them. Four, five. If I want to go crazy, like taking this one prize isn't a big deal because they're going to be green spaced. I think just going through this guy is still the most important thing. So we're going to attach here. I think I want to let loose his hand. Makes the most sense to me. Uh, do I want to get rid of Lele or Volkner? Probably not, actually. I probably just want to do this. Stealthy Hood, something we won't attack with. Let loose. Pick up one E power. One E power isn't great. We're just going to retreat and full bits again. That's all of our energies out the deck. So we have some pretty high value top decks. And hopefully this let loose is going to be hurting the greens build of Reshizard here. Make it hard for them to find Welder. Which is the thing we're most afraid of. And yeah, they are just going to be forced to play a judge here. And we got him. Nice beating one Rashizar. They didn't draw all that well. But at the same time, we had our own misfortune of prizing a, a key piece. Coco Prism is basically the most key piece <laughs> of the deck. Would have been nice to have seen a Rashizar draw a little better, though. To really put us on the clock a little bit more. So we are able to go first, which is always nice for a combo-based deck, especially if we want to let loose our opponent. Starting off, off with Zera Aura is never too bad either. And we also have Radar Ultra Ball Lily, potentially a phenomenal hand. We're also getting the benefit of a mulligan, which even helps out more. Looks like we're up against Weezing. So Weezing's a matchup where we have to be a lot more restrained. So as crazy as this hand would be against other matchups, we have to reel it back in a little bit and not go too crazy with the Dene's and all that shenanigans. It's normally just trying to develop peak ROM quick, still always the option, but do it within your sort of like boundaries without committing too heavily um, towards the Dene and whatnot. So we'll start with this radar. Our Coco is here. We have one Pika Rom. I'll also grab Coco. Sky High Claws is often a cool option for us. Actually, I just want to grab this because I want a Lily. So this turn we go Volkner, Ultra Ball, away two Lightnings. Coco, no, 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 no. So if I want the full value from Coco, I probably should bench another thing. We have our Marshado. I should also check our blowers, our Stealthy Hoods here as well. Checking stuff while we go here. We want to get the early full blitz. We need to have two bench Pokemon for our Prism to do the most value. If I Volkner for energy, no, I don't want a Volkner. I want a Pikaron. 
benching more GXs is always a bit of a concern because they get so much value against us. But our hand is so strong that we're going to be threatening full blitz at pace. Still hitting this guy is going to be annoying for them. Ultra balling. Pretty nice ultra ball here. You can grab the prism. Get the value while we can. I'm just going to edit switch as well because they are a deck that does play let loose. So getting that done early seems good. And we can just pass here. Volkner is guaranteed full blitz on turn two. So we've done our job. At this point, it's about threatening that tag bolt option, being aware of Larvitar, and trying to keep on top of our field blowers and our Mar Shadow so that we uh, deny these spell tags and deny the, um, what should we call it, the shrine damage. That's the main thing we're after. They're going to go ahead and Cynthia. I'm going to treasure away treasure, so they have plenty of ball search. They may be marshadowing us as well, of course, if they need to reload. Looks like another coughing coming down. Maybe he's a scary card for us, for sure, uh, because they can do straight up 150 against us. They're also going to treasure away stretcher here. So Cynthia into a lot of treasures, three treasures in fact. They're going to grab Weezing. Not sure as to why, but they're just going to pass. Okay. So, as mentioned, we want a Volkner here for sure. I'm going to grab this as well, just as a backup. When we need it. Let's get that free retreat roll in. Get the attachment in. And I'm going to full blitz all to the active. Our opponent has essentially a one card hand. They treasured away a lot of other treasures though, so they're probably just holding Supporter. So they have Weezing Supporter in hand. It's pretty risky for them to put down a Mimikyu because they're just trying to hit a uh, counter, which is only four copies in their deck. And their deck is still thick. So it's pretty risky for them to try and bring up the Mimikyu here. So they probably will just go into the coughing. And we're going to take the first prize, six energy, immediately threatening that Tag Bolt for next turn. And indeed, coughing does come up. They want to start getting that wheezing spread going on our bench as quickly as possible. So we see wheezing number one. They have the three CE. Actually, they are supporterless. They're just going to go for splattering sludge here, which is obviously very good for us. So we can attach. I don't think we need to field blower, to be honest. I think we can just tag bolt. I'll draw two forehand, and then we'll just tag bolt. We can leave the Mimikyu because we've just used a GX attack, so the Mimikyu can filch, but don't think it matters too much. Their spell tag's going to put some damage on us, but it looks like this early pressure is going to be pretty difficult for the Weezing to deal with. If you want us to further tech for this matchup, obviously Acer Road is an include you could consider. Our opponent gets an Orangaroo off the top. That was literally their top deck, because otherwise they definitely would have played it last turn. So they also have a Rescue Stretcher. And they're going to have... Oh wow, they didn't even go for a Coughing. That's pretty risky. They're just going to Instruct here to try and get out of this mess. There's a shrine, there's a net ball, sorry, nest. That gets them coughing. Can they filch? No, just a pass. Shrine's gonna do some work. We would prefer to not have to field blower, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab. I can just use this. Do this. And we'll just full blitz. We can thin even more lightnings from our deck. I 
Typically, we're more worried about wheezing. Looks like our opponent drew fairly poorly this game. Um, but at the same time, the tag pot does put them under a lot of pressure. The stealthy hood helps. We do have a lot of stadium removal options. They got themselves a Frost Rotom and a Gladion here. We have not played around Frost Rotom at all. We have 10 energies in play, so their uh, Frost Crush will be doing 210 against us, but it's only if they can get it active. Counter Energy Let Loose gives them an option to draw into switches. Normally the deck plays ropes over physical switches, though. They're going to put down a Mew. Too little too late for that option. We can Field Blower here. I feel like that's the best thing we can do. I could Vogner for Nest Ball. Just marsh it away. We're essentially two prizes away, so we don't even care if he Frost Crushes us at this point. Like, he just doesn't have enough damage to beat us at this point. We can just do this. Resetting hole. And we'll just full blitz. We can give him the satisfaction of using a Frost Rotom, but it doesn't matter at this point. We have two Zero Auras ready to go. We can knock out everything. We have Ultra Ball for Dedene or Lele if I need to actually dig for anything, but at the moment we don't. So. Looks like they'll just be taking three prizes against us. Well, they get Counter Energy Lele. But again, only 160 damage in play. Can't knock anything out, so. Just the Frost Crush, and we can just Plasma Fists. This matchup can be difficult. It all depends on uh, how nicely we can limit our bench. That game, we had one tag team and two GXs in play. Typically, you don't want to put too many GXs down if you can help it, um, because they're getting Weezing and Shrine overlapping on you for a lot of damage, but... Just basically don't go wide with Let Looses and don't go wide with Dedenes if you can help it. That's basically the main long and short of the deck. We have enough answers with the double Field Blower, the Marshadow, the Stretcher for Marshadow, and the Thunder Mountain to not be getting hit with Shrine too often. And in terms of attacking, as soon as you uh, Full Blitz once, like you're chilling by the feel of feel of the matchup. You actually don't care too much if they take a big knockout with a Lavatar or a um, Rotom because that's like one less Pokemon that will be in play for them to get continual damage over. You're much more concerned if your board just is wide and stays wide for too many turns. That's the real way that you can lose the game. So we start with... Volkner probably just going to go ahead and grab that radar so I can get rid of two energy and still attach one to Pikarom on the bench. So we're going to start off with the Marshadow here with the intention of trying to get towards Coco Prism Star as quickly as possible. By the sleeves, we might be facing another Reshizard here. Which would be a good way to round this off. Shuckle. Well, okay. <laughs> uh... We're going to... Drawing a Nest Ball is actually a huge draw for us. We can scout our deck quickly here as well. Coco Prism's here this time. Happy days. We have a Radar. We have Dedene. We have Zero Aura. Everything's looking good. We have both Let Loose. Lele's in here. Picaroms here. Even Coco's an important card to bear in mind. We have one E-Power in the prize cards. We have the Mountain. We've prized double Guzmo, which is a bit scary. Especially when they're kicking off with a Volcanion, so that's something to bear in mind. But in terms of our raw draw this turn, it's looking pretty solid. Radar energy. Not that glamorous, but definitely does the job. So these guys... We're going to attach to the active. I'm not worried about him taking a knockout. 
And we can just... Uh, do I want to rope here, actually? I could rope into Zeraora. Force this Shuckle active. Shuckle's two prizes, and it stops him using a Flare starter. Yeah, we want to... We definitely want to rope. Rope seems frustrating for them. I should I should have actually attached this Picarom. I should have known that I was going to rope. I would have two energy on Picarom right now. Small mistake. Saw the rope too late. Regardless, we've gone first, so I can, I can still energy switch now, knowing that we can uh, we can attack next turn. Don't think I want to play around um, Let Loose because they're a Volcanium based build. But as soon as I see a Shuckle, I don't really know what they are. So for that purpose, I'll put down a Pika Rom just to feel a bit more secure about what's going on. I wonder what the Shuckle's in here for. I feel like the Volcanians are good enough against like Zapdos matchups. Strange addition to the deck. If it is a Reshizard, it may be something completely different. I'm gonna see a Volkner. Not a Volkner, a Welder. And they're debating where this energy needs to go. It's gonna go active, just for one. It means they can retreat Shuckle and do a flare starter. Oh, they choose to attach to the Reshizard instead. So they're going to triple poison us? See a Fiery Flint. That seems like a very odd choice from our opponent. Very odd. They even got rid of a Power Plant, which is really good for us because showing off Thunderclap Zone is annoying. I guess we, we already have a Marsho developed. Yeah, that's probably why. At least make us use the Marsho though, right? I don't know. I'm actually going to go Rap GX here. Pretty interesting. Pretty interesting indeed. So we can ultra ball Lele and just full blitz this guy for a knockout. Committing choice band onto this is really good for us. Let's grab our one Guzma. Because of the Shuckle in play, taking this one prize is actually worthwhile. Oftentimes against Green's builds. Actually, this probably isn't a Green's build because they play Shuckle, right? So what is this build? <laughs> the hand is just energy cards. They got rid of a Judge though, so they have a draw supporter. Probably Welder. That's like the only card I would think is more worthwhile. Like, because they're getting rid of a Judge, right? So do I just try and hit into this Reshizard while I can? Hitting it with a choice band means that he could choice band outrageous back. I think it's just this, to be honest. I think it's just this. The biggest problem is the choice bands on this guy. I prefer to be like protecting the choice band, but this is a good price to take. We get one of our E powers, which could also help us on our quest to knock out this Reshizard next turn. So the Rap GX attack has been used. Double Blaze is often the thing that we're most afraid of, so they're going to have to try and find Welder Choice Band now. We're actually benching a EV Snorlax. I guess it's too fat for us to actually try and think about knocking it out. We basically just have to ignore it, so... They're going to go attach. And let's see what else they want to do here. They're going to go for a Guzma. Is it stalling play? It's like they know our Guzmas are prized. <laughs> I don't want to sink E powers, even if I have to pass this turn. So I will just Lily for four. Now we will pass this turn. It's like he knows. 
they're actually going to spend a Kukui, which is, again, amazing for us. Amazing for us that he's spending Kukui. That's a key tech card that he's spent here just to get out of Brick. We've seen a couple of Reshizards have some subpar turns. They're going to stretch it back to that Volk. Get that bad boy back down. Attach to their Reshizard. He's slowly getting powered up. They're also going to poke a gear here. They're going to go ahead and grab Welder. There's energy. Don't think it's all that strong today for one. We'll just uh we'll just full blitz here for one fifty. Put out this energy onto our choice banded Picaron. They're going to go Welder. I imagine to the Reshizard. For some reason, they've put five energies on. They have flipped that GX marker, so. They're going to field out off our choice band. What else? Do they have a moving card for this guy? Do they have a healing card? Well, they have power plant. I'm just going to go ahead and Volkner. I want more damage in my hand for next turn. Don't need to use the Marshallow this turn. I could do it next turn. We'll just full blitz here. Keeping the Marshallow for the potential of us taking prize cards that change. If we have like uh, energy switches or something that we draw into as well. So Guzma's game. So they have to judge us or Marshallow us here. Guzma on Shuckle. So that's the good news. Thanks to their power plant, they're able to greens finally. Playing shuckling greens sounds so bad. <laughs> so bad. Let's see a nest ball. That gives them another Reshizard, but. Did they get a choice band or no? They didn't even take choice band, so looks like they were playing one band. Regardless, Guzmo's game. So we were able to beat two janky Reshizards. <laughs> we weren't able to beat like big DDG, Jirachi, draw lots of cards Reshizards, but that's all I have time for today, though, I'm afraid. So that's gonna be Pika Rom. We were able to beat everything in our path, but the decks weren't the best. If you want to see uh, some more gameplay of this deck, you can go and head over to, again, twitch.tv slash Team um, where you can look back at the videos for, I think, two weeks or something. So should be plenty of time to get some more looking at Picarom if you're interested in the deck. And once again, that reminder's there to check me out live. Uh, we can chat more freely, and you can send questions my way and all that good stuff. So... Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, Picaroms really good. I think it's top tier. So, uh, yeah, it's back on the map. Thanks to a really well thought out list from those guys over in America. Uh, so, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in another video tomorrow. Cheers.